What's going on everybody? Welcome back to this episode of G4 Outdoors. Today we're going to be installing the Garmin 93SV on this Alumacraft. I've done a couple videos on uh, fish finder sonars on different boats and I haven't really brought you guys uh, into a really deep dive on how to install one of these. So today we're going to get started on this. Uh, Pops has already tore his boat all apart and done a lot of stuff. But the installation has not been done yet so I'm going to bring you along with that. Another thing, my microphone is in for repair, so if there's any wind noise or anything like that, I apologize beforehand. Anyway, stick around. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Before we get started with anything, your transducer is going to be mounted on the back of your boat. Obviously, right? Uh, if you got a new boat, anything that you screw on to the back of your transom is going to void your warranty. Any boat that you do that to. It's just, I would hate for anybody to have a, a brand new boat, a five year warranty, you put one screw in here and you're done, your warranty's over with. So when you buy your boat, it would be very helpful if you had your dealer install a plastic mounting plate back here. That way your warranty is still going to be applicable. So uh, a little plastic board back here will go a long way, last you a long time. The installation of this is going to be on the 93SV UHD Echo Map. I said all that backwards, didn't I? It doesn't matter. This setup's going to include anything from the any model of the garments you're going to get. It's all going to be the same. They all got the same wires. The only thing you're going to run into is just different options in your in your setup here. So anyway, the installation is going to be the same on all of this. Let's dig in. So most of the stuff, uh, you know, a factory boat's usually going to come with some sort of fish finder on it. Uh, you don't want to remove any of your fish finder stuff right away. The best thing to do is leave all of that wiring hooked up and connected. That way you don't have to fish your own wires. What you can do is tie a rope off to one end of your old unit, okay? So tie the rope off to that, and then when you take your transducer away from the boat, that string will follow it right on out and then you can tie the end of that string onto your new piece of wiring and pull that right back the way that it came. Now if you are rewiring, uh, the easiest and best thing to do is just go back into your factory wiring harness and run with, run with your factory power. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. If it's a fresh install, then you're going to have to snake your power wires all the way back to your battery. Or if you don't want it on your battery, you can run it to one of your switch panels up here. Go to a constant power and just plug it in. There's not much voltage that needs to go to your, uh, your, your Garmin screen. So you can easily run into just your factory switch panel. Anything that is constant power. That would be like your, your bilge pump, your lights. Yeah, if, you, if you're on constant power, it'll never shut off unless it has a switch. I had to put mine on a accessory switch, the, the down scan, the old down scan. You hook it up, it runs all the time. So that's why we had to put it on an accessory to kill it. Okay, so yeah, a, an accessory switch would be a good idea. In most cases, I think a lot of people will be undoing their, uh, their screen to eliminate power from that. Uh, you know, he brought up an excellent point. Uh, parasitic loss on your battery that will be something that you need to take into consideration if you don't unplug your screen but if you uh, if you're the kind of person that takes the screen off your boat which is what I'm used to doing then that's the way to go now when I talk about the parasitic loss uh, one of the things that will do that and you know we was just over here conversing about that if you have a if you have a black box, like uh, for the Garmin Live Scope or uh, uh, down imaging or side imaging, if you have an external brain over here, if you have an external brain like that, that's going to be on constant power. So, you know, that's something else that you need to take into consideration. If you have a brain box like this, it's going to draw constant power. You're going to want that on a switch. Yeah, if, it doesn't have a switch on it. So if you're just running a, a monitor up here with... Uh, that runs straight to your transducer. I don't see a problem running constant power to that, but uh, you know, to each their own. So he's already got an accessory switch on here. So we're gonna tap into one of those and I'll show you exactly how to do that. 
All right, so on the 93 SV, we're not running live scope on this. So the blue wire would be for your live scope or a brain box for communication purposes. The brown wire, this right here is just an old, uh, they never quit making it this way. So the brown wire is trash. The uh, red and black wire is all you're going to need if you're just going to be running the transducer. So up here, focus back in up here and you can see uh, we've got all these wires sorted out. The only thing that you're going to want is the red wire and the black wire. So if you're into splicing, you already know how to do this. Uh, otherwise, I'll bring you along with a couple of clips showing you how to connect these into the wires. Stripping wires isn't a hard process. You don't want to strip off too much. You can go out and buy yourself an expensive pair or <laughs> just a, uh, a pair of knife or a, a knife will work just fine. Wrong way, bud. So uh, <laughs> you got to learn how to use one of these first. It's been a long time. Uh, these make it super simple. Just put it in there and do it quick. Chomp. I mean, it works really nice. These are they're overpriced if you don't use them too much, but super handy. Super handy. I know it looks like a mess up there, and it is. It's hard to get to. So. If yours looks like this yeah. and you really don't know what you're doing, the best thing to do is just <laughs> come up bad. here and take your panel off and you can easily get to yeah. everything behind there. He's, he's but luckily we got some pigtails down him. here that were easy to get to. Now before you make any permanent wire connections, uh, like I say, we have the uh, power turned off to the boat. He's got a... Uh, Master switch. A master switch on here, so there's no power running to this. Do a quick install just to make sure this is going to hold up. I don't want 12 volts running through my fingers, so I'm going to do that there, get a ground, and You're see ready? if he'll turn the screen on now. So power's on. Pushing the power button on the. One more time. All right, this is why you need to do a soft install first. Uh, might have to run a different power wire. Oh, you know what? What? Your accessories aren't turned on. Huh? Is your accessories turned on? It, it doesn't run off accessories. Let me try it. Okay, hold on. I don't like that. Okay, we did have that wired up right. We just did not have the accessories turned on. So red to red, black to black. This is a simple install. Uh, just a little hiccup on our part. So I'm going to cover whatever this wire here is up and we're going to do a hard install. And uh, this is easy as well. I'm going to bring you along with that. So, you, you know, it's easy. Black to black, red to red. Hopefully your switches are the same. Now the options when hooking your wires up together, the best route to go is by soldering. Uh, if you know how to do that, that is the preferred method, along with some uh, heat shrink tubing on there. Uh, you get a just a way better connection. The other option is to go with some, oh, where, where are we going? I don't know, some butt connectors. I wouldn't really recommend the butt connectors. They work just fine, but uh, the preferred method is definitely going to be a soldering gun. Now, something fairly comical. It's only comical when it doesn't happen to you, but be sure and put your heat shrink tubing on before you solder. Stay right there. Do not move. It does help having these helping hands here. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is flux your wire. Get on my carpet too. Yep. Okay. And then once your heat gun has come up to temperature, you're just going to want to touch off your silver solder onto the wiring. And what that flux that you already put on there, that flux will draw nothing. the silver solder. My thing's broke. Gotta put on a new one. 
Yeah, all that was just copper wire. Just out to a point? Yeah. Don't last very long, but it works. Ooh. So like I say, once you get the silver solder on there, you're going to want to heat your wires up. Or once you get your flux on there, you're going to want to heat your wires up. Touch your silver solder on there, and what the flux is going to do is actually draw all that silver solder into the mix of the wiring. Uh, take your time with it. It will work. Once the wire gets hot enough, you'll watch that silver solder just melt away inside of there. Mickey Mouse, but it works. Ow! And of course, when you solder, it does become hot. <laughs> I bet that won't go over that. I knew it. I knew it. So, anyway, uh, it's going. It's going. Get in there. <laughs> Once you have that soldered and you've done a little tug test on it, go ahead and slip your. <laughs> Heat shrink tubing over it. Oh, this flame here, you don't want the tip of it. Get Just your, the bottom of it. Get your handy dandy lighter out and go ahead. Okay. And shrink that on there. We'll try and bring you guys in a little bit closer on this one here just to demonstrate how this is done. <laughs> so again, go ahead and put your flux on there. You can see that wire melt right into there, and it is now one. And that's probably the best connection you're going to get on one of those. All right, so we got the wiring all buttoned up up here, power, ground. Now what we need to do is take the coaxial for the transducer. And like I say, one good thing about this Alumacraft is everything is very accessible. Just unscrewed this whole side piece right here and we're going to be able to run it down along through here blah 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 out here and screw to the black back plate but uh if you remember the video and this is very important before you take any wiring out tie off to it so that you can run that rope out here as you pull your transducer wire out that way when your when your string is out here you can tie off that string to the connecting cable to your transducer and pull it all the way back up. But being as we do have a nice platform here to where everything's screwed on, unlike a wooden shell boat, a uh, bass boat, or something like that, uh, you know, it's going to be harder if you can't take the sides off. Luckily, we can, so let's get to snaking this wire down through here. So this is the power end of the transducer and you can do this a couple ways on the back of the boat. You can, well, obviously he's going to put this through yeah. a splash hole here yeah. uh, or you can run it directly over your transom and that's going to depend on how big the end of your cable is. Uh, luckily ours is small enough it can fit through that hole. I can't say that for myself all the time, but so yeah, luckily ours fits through there and just leave that right there. This will wind up mounting right here. So anyway, first step, put it through the hole. And then we're going to zip tie it. 
to this cable right here and into this grommet. We'll be right back. Oh, you see here, he, uh, he tied the cord off when he pulled the old one out. It's a perfect example of why you need to chase your strings out with your old equipment. I'll tape this too. Just here, give it a small acquisition going through there. Start up here. So if you've ever snaked any cables through any holes, surely you've come across a point where the bulge of whatever you're pulling through is going to get caught on That's something. Sexual. So, so always tape up just to reinsure that it'll uh man this is getting bad so it'll slide through there smoothly <laughs> okay so he's got a hold of the wire up there or, or a string that he already chased through and now when he pulls that i mean you'll just see how easy this is and why it's so important to tie off to these here we go see now he's pulling on the string I am going to help this around the corner just a little bit. And now that is pretty much all his. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I'm going to help feed this through just a little bit. Now he's got it all the way up, up there. Now, if you did not follow instructions from the beginning and tie that off, when you removed it, you're gonna have a headache actually running that all the way up through there. So really, this, the string, it's not just an idea, it's a rule of thumb. Put a string on there before you take your old stuff out. Run your new stuff right back to where it came from and you know, it, it's easy. It just makes life so much easier. Now that the wires are ran up through there, the best place to tuck your wires is actually going to be behind the, the side well here. Uh, just coil them up behind here. You really don't want to mess the wires up underneath that dash because as you saw earlier, you know, you got a bunch of wires right here controlling all these toggle switches. So I find it best to put all your excess wiring and cable behind here. Now we're going to use the ram mount to mount that to the mounting plate and that ram mount of course the the male end is up here and over there on the floor is the extension to that of course this just mounts on the bottom of this and you guys can mount this any way you want I'm not going to go over the steps on mounting this to the ram mount ram mount makes thousands of adapters for anything you want to put on your boat uh, not plugging them, of course. It's just probably one of the best options out there for mounting anything is a ram mount. All right, you got your top plate and then there's a plate right here. These are two separate pieces. There's three pieces here. 
This piece will screw into the top of your transducer. It can only go on there one way. And then this piece right here will screw on to the, onto the back of the boat. There's uh, something I'm not quite agreeing with on here. I'm gonna look it up in the instructions, but anyway, the top plate screws onto this very easily. Self-explainable that it can only go on there one way. So let's get this buttoned up and then we'll get this on the back of the boat. All right, something that I do want to mention whenever you put this pivot pin in here, do not tighten it all the way. Uh, you'll, you'll want this to be able to move. And what that's going to prevent, it'll save you a lot of money in the long run because if that hits something down here and you have that just a little bit loose, when you hit something, it'll kick it up. And that is what it's designed for. Uh, you know, if you put this on your trolling motor or something like that, you can you can tighten it all the way up so that it's completely secure, but having it loose is going to be your best option. Now, when it comes to mounting this, I got to get a straight edge. It's something that you don't need to overthink. All you need to do is get that transducer just level with the bottom of your boat. As you can see there, I mean, it it's not a hard thing to do just get it level with the bottom of your boat the reason why we drilled it where we did we got it as low as it'll go to function that way you can see there's grooves right here that way if it needs to be raised you know you can you can raise it up like that or it can be down you know just depending on what your radar is going to allow you to do sonar radar whatever you want to call it so now something that you know these these garmin uh sv units a uhd units i i don't have a problem with garmin but this this really should not be this loose. Okay, I'll, I'll put another one right in here. Now try it. Well, that's a, that's a thousand times better. Okay, I'll put another screw in there. But look how much that wiggles around. That's uh, it's really unacceptable. We're going to have to put another one in there. If there was a third screw center bottom on this, that, that would have helped that out a whole we bunch. We can put a screw down there. Well, let's, let's do tap it. one in there let's then. Do it. Let's do this. All right, now we put the we put a screw in right down here, bottom center on this on the mounting plate to yeah. the transom, and now you can see. I mean, we're moving the transom. I don't, you got screws for that transom to get up or no? It's screwed up or? here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't want to put any screws down there. So it's just loose on the bottom. Loosey goosey. So yeah, uh, if you're installing this on the back of the boat, I would recommend go ahead and putting a th third screw on the bottom because that was entirely too loose and if you hit something I could see that whole unit breaking and here again you can see that when he was just moving that up and down that's that's a safety feature along with uh, dialing in your sonar so if you were to hit something here it would just knock that up out of the way instead of losing all that now the one thing I said I don't really agree with I, I don't like how this loops around here and then comes up into this little cage. If you paid a thousand, you wouldn't like it either. You would hate it. <laughs> so now we got uh, these little wire clips. We're just gonna button this up along the wall here so that this stays in place. And like I say, you know, guys, if you got a new boat that's still under warranty, you cannot drill into your transom, otherwise you'll lose your warranty. So keep make make sure that you have your dealer put one of these plates on. Or have your dealer install this for you. It's uh, They only charge an hour rate to install a new unit. All right, putting one more clamp on there to keep all the wires all good and good and good and good good. good Got everything buttoned back up. No wires showing. Nice job there. Got the Garmin there. Actually, the Garmin's somewhere else, but it's up there. So anyways guys, uh, I hope that this video is a lot better than all my other uh, fish finder sonar mounts uh, installs. 
uh, you know, I just hope that it's a lot better than those. I brought you along every step of the way. I tried and show you everything that there is to install one of these. So anyways, yeah, if this video helped you out, please leave a comment down below. Uh, if something's wrong with any of this, if something doesn't look right, let me know. Leave a comment down below on that too. Anyways, Please. hit the like button, hit hey. the subscribe button, hey. leave a comment down below. We're going fishing. Oh, oh crap. Four.